God bless your family. I'm gonna be quick, I'm gonna try to stay right here because there's a glare right behind me that's waiting to happen to y'all. Um, but I wanted to share this with you briefly, something that just came to mind. I believe it's worth mentioning and I pray it be a blessing to somebody. Galatians chapter six, verse seven presents to us a very familiar portion of scripture, a very familiar verse of scripture that simply says, be not deceived, God is not mine. It said, for what a man soweth, that will he also reap. If you think of the gardener, if you plant, if you plant a certain kind of seed, you're gonna reap a certain kind of harvest on the basis of the seed that you have planted. Whatever it is that you plant, whatever it is that you sow, literally, it is, it is a system that was created by God himself, seed time and harvest. So it is in, in terms of planting, in terms of our, our, our ecosystem, you know, agriculture, reproduction, what it is that you seed into a thing is what it is that you will reap from a thing. I wanna speak specifically as it pertains to circumstances. Circumstances in where we are either believing for a certain outcome that we believe that God has promised to us, if we're believing for a certain form of justice or vindication, that's big for many of us, including myself, that's huge. We wanna, we wanna feel vindicated. We don't wanna feel that justice is prevailing. And so we look to God and then we trust to God and we, and we put our trust in God. Now, when we put our trust in God on the basis of his word, it is imperative that our trust in God pre pre present a barrier or, or it present a barrier in the form of us, it sets a standard and says, we're gonna trust God in terms of waiting for the results of trusting in him. That we are not going to allow ourselves to become manipulators of the circumstance. You'd be, you'd be surprised how many of us have fallen into the era of praying one minute, but we're in witchcraft the next minute. Witchcraft is, is, is it's manipulation. It is literally manipulating the circumstance to try to bend the circumstance to your will. But we have become so used to thinking that we have outrun the justice of God to we, many of us have become guilty of going the way of witchcraft and going the way of manipulating the circumstance to try to bend it to our, our will instead of waiting on God because we don't feel like we dealt with the consequences, not realizing that we are really walking. It's the mercy of God that, that, that has not allowed the finger of God's judgment to deal with those sorts of situations. Let me give you an example. When you talk, when you think about Abraham and Sarah and how that there was a promise that was given to them, that there would be, there was a promised seed that even in their old age, that God would, that God would provide a seed. We know that the promised seed was Isaac, but we do realize that before Isaac was born, here's what happens when when we say, okay, well, we're praying, so quote, end quote, or we're waiting on God, but while we're waiting on God, the enemy begins to work on your mind and make you feel like if you don't touch the circumstance, God ain't gonna do it. If you don't manipulate the circumstance, God is not gonna do it. And so we literally begin to take on a mentality that says, God, I still acknowledge you as God. I know you're up there, you know I love you, but you're taking away too long or you finna behave as if you don't wanna do this for me. So Lord, I still worship you as God, I still honor you as God, but I'm gonna handle this myself. And it's in the process of doing stuff like that, that Ishmael's are created. Ishmael, Ishmael's are created. The one that was born to the handmaiden of Sarah, she was created when the promise that was supposed to be waited for, it wasn't waited for, they began to manipulate the circumstances, to manipulate the circumstance but the manipulation of the circumstance is going to create something that will fight what is promised, will fight the destiny. Whenever circumstances are manipulated, whenever witchcraft is allowed, destiny is in danger. Oh Lord, have mercy. Oh Sheba, I gotta say that thing again. Whenever you go the way of manipulating the circumstance, instead of waiting on God, you, you jeopardize your destiny. So I said, listen, Father, one said, Look, Father, I believe, Lord, I believe, but help my unbelief. Help me to wait on what it is that you promised me. Help me to wait on what the seed of your word will produce. Help me, help your people, God. Help us to, 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 to avoid that danger. If God said, wait, wait. Let us not go the route of manipulating or allowing ourselves to be manipulated and having the courage to tell somebody, wait a minute, you need to wait on God. Don't try to force me to fit in a place in your life I wasn't destined to sit. Uh-oh. 
Sometimes we got to love somebody enough to tell them, stop trying to make me be to you what God never intended for me to be to you. We don't want to hurt somebody's feelings. But the reality is we do more damage by complying with a person's fantasy. Help Jesus. We do more damage by cooperating with a person's fantasy instead of giving him the reality of God's truth, right? God ain't made us to patch up nothing that's going on in anybody's life in order for us to reach destiny and them to reach destiny. Both parties, all parties involved have got to operate in truth. So I didn't intend to go this long, but I want to say again, let us get into the word of God and get into the permanent, into the, into the presence of God and be reminded of what his word says. And in prayer, in his presence, as we move along in, in communication with him, he will reveal to us, this is what I have for you. He will give us glimpses. He will give us snippets, snapshots, and excerpts. He will give us breadcrumbs to continue to, to, to lead us on the path because he might, it might, it literally would overwhelm us if he gave it to us all at once. But don't allow yourself to be distracted. The scriptures say, be not weary in well-doing, for in the due season you will reap if you faint not. It said, wait, I say on the Lord. And waiting on the Lord will involve you not manipulating the circumstance. Don't manipulate and you. Listen, whoever this is for, you're going to know exactly what I mean. Do not manipulate the circumstance. Don't be a manipulator. And then you turn around and call it God. And the last thing I'll leave you with. The scripture said in Jesus when he was teaching his disciples, he said, listen, he said, leave your gift at the altar before you try to come to me like everything is, is Gucci and everything is cool. He said, leave your gift at the altar. Leave your gift that you wanted to present to me, the Lord says, in the meeting place, which is the place of prayer. He said, and go be reconciled to your brother. No portion of scripture said, follow peace with all men and holiness without which no man will see the Lord. And as much as lies within you, and I present this to you as a work in progress in the same area. And as much as lies within you, follow peace. Seek to find peace. Come to a place of peace with people. If reconciliation is possible, do it. Go the way of reconciliation, right? Reconcile. Reconcile. Holy Spirit, I love you. Reconcile. Establish peace with people. And I'm going to just shoot you straight. Don't lie on people. I'm talking to you church people too. Don't lie on people and feel as if your diocese, don't feel as if your series of ministries is going to protect you from the truth of God. The truth of God, just like the Bible said that the voice of the Lord will break the cedars. The voice of God and the word of God that cuts through joint marrow, it is a discerner. The Bible said the word of God is quick and powerful. It is sharper than any two-edged two sword. It is, it is, a, it is a, div, a divided even the joint and the. It is a discerner of the thoughts and the intents of the heart. We must operate in truth when we deal with people. We must operate in truth when we deal with God's people, and especially, it's very difficult for us to look in the mirror or to take an accountability. That's what the Bible says: Let a man examine himself. We all must examine ourselves. We all have to take an inventory, and if we find ourselves wanting, it's okay to acknowledge that. But don't lie on people. Don't put lies on people's names. Because I'm telling you, the Lord will judge the matter. I want y'all to hear me. I know I come on here every once in a while. I want y'all to hear me. The Lord will judge the matter. I'm going to tell you again. Do not put out lies on people. Do not put yourself in the, in the, in the, in the very dangerous position of trying, to, of trying to be a blockade to somebody's destiny. Do not try to sacrifice somebody's name and reputation. We're going we're gonna, to we're gonna get this out. Do not put yourself in, in a position to be an instrument of sabotage to protect people from the truth of you or things that you don't want people to know about you. Do not do that. If you have done that, I want to say make it right. Apologize. Because if you haven't done that, you are in grave danger. Grave danger. Do not lie on people to save face. Don't do that. We're talking about witchcraft. We're talking about manipulation. And, and, and this goes on in the world. And I want to say specifically, I, let me tell you, it goes on in the church. It goes on in houses of God. You have people who are anointed by God, called by God, gifted by God. But they are the, I'm a, let, me be, let me just be ebonically, some of the lioness, slanderous, most trifling, double-tongued people walking the face of the earth. 
and it's sad because many of it happens right there in the house of God. And what's even scarier is a lot of it goes on and people think that it's going to happen and they're going to be able to do this stuff without consequence. If we are committed to truth, we have to be willing to confront the lie with what we know to be true. Knowing that we have God's backing, even when the support of people is lacking, we have the backing of God and of his spirit. And even though it seems like there's some things that God will wink at because he's given us time to get it together. He said, yet a little while. I said, don't be envious of the workers of iniquity and those that seem to prosper in their ways. He said, soon, I'm, I'm going to mow the grass. <laughs> he said, soon they will be cut down like the grass. Don't find yourself on that side of God's justice when it arrives. I hope this will be a blessing to you, okay? We're going to trust God. Let's trust him. Let's trust him to the degree that we ask him, Lord, sit on me. Sit on me. Don't let my flesh rise up and cause me to create something that will ultimately mock what it is that you have promised me. I don't want to contaminate your blessing. Sit on me, Holy Ghost, Spirit of the living God. Sit on me, hold me down, anchor me, and give me the courage to persevere in faith, lest I fall short of the promise of God, that I stagger at the promise of God through unbelief or just allowing the natural part of me to get his way. All right? I love y'all, and I'll talk to you in another few days.